I love the chase and the hunt and I set the pace when I'm running. I always take what I want and I always give it 100. Don't need a bank, no, I'm funded. Play the game like it's nothing. I'm always thankful for something. Don't take for granted, stay humble. Now waiting, better believe in your mind cause it's everything. You can mold, shape, find almost anything. Hold on one sec. This isn't going to be the usual slicing bread fear porn for my channel. They came out pretty well though. Put a little bit of uh, marinara sauce that was left over in the dough when I was mixing it. So it's going to be like almost kind of a tomato bread. So I'm going to leave this over here. We're going someplace else. Cut the air. We're going outside. I did a video recently that was uh, testing out some uh, Geiger counters, simulators, radiation detectors. There's a lot of pushback on that video uh, from certain people. And the, a lot of pushback came back from people that are reasonably well informed about uh, these types of things. And I wanted to do a follow-up video to address some of those concerns because some of them are really legitimate and they bring up other issues, which I think, uh, yeah, well, we're going to go someplace else to talk about that. It's nice in here. It's uh, just a little under 80 in here. Citrus tree is doing well. Got some new grass in there, starting to grow. We're going out here, though. Not 80 in here. It's just about 45 out here. Chickens have escaped again. We're going to head back to the shelter. Although it looks like the chickens want me to let them in, so we might be do the, doing that first. We're going inside? They escape and then they want me to bring them back. We're going in? Yeah, we're going back to the fallout shelter, because that's what I want to talk about, because that's there's something important. Okay, come on guys. Up, up, up. Come on. Up, up, up. There you go. Coco. Come on, Coco. Come on, Coco. Come on. No, no, no. You stay in there. Coco, come on. I know, I know. We're gonna go this way. We're gonna go this way. We're gonna go this way. Okay, there you go. Come on, come on. You go around there. Okay. Sometimes chickens are smart. Oftentimes they're not. All right. So we're going into the the shelter over here. This is the follow the shelter. Also our root cellar. And there's a reason why I wanted to chat in here. Keep it locked up. In we go. Yeah. All right, here we are. So, why are we inside here? Well, in the video about radiation detectors, which I've got down in here, there's one of them down in this Faraday bucket here. There's another one, uh, well actually, it's uh, three of them over in some of these containers over here. Uh, in the video, I was doing testing on a number of radiation detectors and some people that uh, you know, seem fairly familiar with this topic uh, had some pushback on the video, and they were right that a lot of the uh, radiation detectors that I was uh, using, including the one that I think had the highest head range, which is one made by Better Geiger, uh, they were suggesting that these tools would be utterly useless in a real radiation emergency, in a real nuclear war situation, because uh, you know they would quickly get uh, oversaturated and. You, you know, you'd peg the highest level, and then you wouldn't really be able to tell, uh, you know, is this area over here safer, or is this area over here safer? <clears throat> because no matter where, no matter where you go, uh, the radiation level would be beyond the ability to, of the detector to discriminate between, you know, this area has more, this area is less. Um, the reason that I didn't review any radiation detectors that have a higher headroom is because they honestly don't really seem to be available to the public. Now, there are ways of um, uh, allegedly 
fabricating things like this, and I think I am going to be doing something like that in an upcoming video. Uh, there's a great book called Nuclear War Survival Skills. It's a free download. It's written by someone named Crescent Kearney. Uh, there's a lot of great information in there, and one of the things in there is how to make a DIY uh, radiation detector. I don't know how it works. I Everything in the book seems really solid, legitimate, well-researched, and uh, you know, factual. Uh, the idea that you could make a really high-quality radiation detector that is more useful than ones that are commercially available. Um, it seems a little surprising to me. Uh, you know, I'm a big DIYer myself, just because, you know, something's commercially available doesn't necessarily, to me, make me think, oh, well, that must be better than anything that I could make. Uh, but it's kind of weird that if it's so easy to make these kind of things, you know, why aren't they being commercially offered to people? Separate, separate topic right there. And in fact, the whole idea of sensing really high radiation environments is a separate topic uh, from what I really want to talk about in this video. Uh, and that is the idea that if there was a major nuclear war, that there would be huge areas that had really high radiation. And the, you know your average commercially available radiation detectors are just gonna get overwhelmed. They wouldn't really be useful in those environments. And I think that that is uh, you know, possibly true. Uh, depending on where you are, you could be in an area that has an enormous amount of radiation. It would easily oversaturate a lot of these units. Um, but I think that that is a reality, that is a fact, that um, kind of misses a bigger fact, which is if you are living in one of these environments that gets so saturated with radiation and you are navigating outside around in it, you, you know, your chances are not really great uh, in, in that kind of a situation. And it gets me back to, you know, why I built this place here. Uh, I mentioned uh, before we popped in that this is a fallout shelter. I built it as a root cellar so that I can store things. It's mostly being used as a fallout shelter right now, but I do have potatoes. I actually wanted to check and go grocery shopping later and I wanted to see how many potatoes I've left. I guess I could buy one more bag of potatoes. And it looks like if onions are on sale, maybe I'll get myself some onions too. One of the great things about having a, a root cellar is you can you know, buy things that like to be chilled and if you can get a bunch of it and it's on sale, you know you have a place to put it. Uh, but if your plan in a nuclear emergency, in, did I say nuclear or nuclear? <laughs> I don't know. If your plan in a radiological emergency involves having a, a really, like a, a radiation detector with a really high head, uh, where you could discriminate between, you know, this area is awful and this area is even more awful. If your plan is to have something like that, and I don't get the impression that a lot of the people did push back on my other video, which by the way, here's a link to it if you want to check it out, it's also down in the description below. Um, I don't get the impression that a lot of people that were doing pushback on that were necessarily planning to get one of these other units, which are hard to get or are super, super expensive. Uh, you know, I think some of the pushback was kind of like, you know, well, the, the units you're, you're uh, reviewing in, in this you know, video in question, uh, they're not good enough for these extreme situations, so, and I kind of got the impression from a lot of them that the alternative was, well, so you shouldn't get those, and since nothing else is available, you shouldn't have anything. Um, yeah, I'm not a big fan of that, and they're right that in a lot of situations, these uh, units that I reviewed in that video would be really useless, but if you're in that kind of a situation, and you don't have one of these, you know, super high-end, you know, radiation detectors with that really high headroom, there's a really good chance that you probably don't have a fallout shelter either. And I think if you, if you have the plan that you want to try to be able to survive one of these really extreme events, you know, in a lot of ways it doesn't really even matter if you have a radiation detector. I have a radiation detector so that if we're in our fallout shelter and we're trying to figure out, you know, whether it's wise to go outside, you know, a week or two after an event unfolds, we can make a determination on that because uh, right after an, uh, an emergency event, radiation levels are going to be super, super high and you really ought not be bumbling around whether you have a super good radiation detector or not with a really high head. You, you best not be bumbling around out on the surface. What you really got to do is get yourself underground, get yourself into some kind of a shelter. And I know, I know the pushback that I'm going to hear on that right in this video. Maybe you're already typing the comment right now. I've heard it a million times before. Not everyone can, you know, create something like this. Okay. Yeah. Um, 
the fact that something's difficult and the fact that something isn't, you know, maybe depending on how you want to look at it, isn't available to everyone, it doesn't mean that your life may not depend on having that thing at some point. Uh, and I think that's just a reality that a lot of people kind of forget, that they feel like if something is beyond their capacity to achieve, or they've convinced themselves that it's beyond their capacity uh, to achieve, you know, that's not a cheat code to get out of a disaster situation. And, you know, that's, that might sound really cold and harsh, um, but, you know, isn't that kind of the reality that we're looking at? You know, there's nothing compassionate about nuclear war, and, or, or a lot of the scenarios that we talk about here on Prepping Channels. Um, so, I wanted to do this video to address the idea that, yes, a lot of the meters that I was reviewing in the other video, you know, they're not up to the task of being in a super high energy radiation environment. But that's honestly not an environment you want to even be in in the first place. You know, if one of these events unfold, uh, unfold, you need to get yourself into a place like this. And I don't know how you do it. You know, I, I have instructional videos. Here's another link, and there's a link down in the description below to my entire series that I put together about putting this place together. And yeah, it was an investment. A uh, place like this can be done for less money than I invested in it. I, I had to, you know, when we were building our house, I had the commercial concrete company, you know, do this since they were already here. You know, I paid a little bit more money on it, um, more money for it, just so that it could be done. You know, there are other cheaper ways of doing these, including freeways, just uh, take time. You know, essentially, you know, you're cutting down trees. You, you know, they're not going to last as long. They're not going to be nice, as nice as this, but at least be something. But, uh, you know, if you're honestly scrubbing around on prepping channels, if, you're, if you honestly think that a lot of these uh, uh, scenarios that people like myself talk about on prepping channels are plausible. And anybody who's watching prepping channels, you've got to have the sense that this kind of stuff is plausible, that it could actually happen. And if it, if it is, yeah, it may not be fair. It may not be uh, easy. It may not, in your view, be possible. But if you're in a situation where you need a fallout shelter, you need a fallout shelter. And, you know, I think that's something that people really got to wrap their minds around. For the last couple decades, people like myself have been doing, you know, prepping channels like this. You know, it's kind of a hobby, uh, and it's enjoyable, and it's, it's enriched my life, the idea of building things, creating things. I get a lot of joy out of it. I get a lot of satisfaction out of it. Um, you know, so I, I, I do a lot of this stuff, and, and it, it has a benefit to me, uh, for me. But, uh, you know, we're moving into a, a world where... You know, a lot of this stuff is moving out of the hypothetical and, uh, you know, into the real, experienced, actual events. You know, you can sit, and, and I don't mean to criticize people in this way, but uh, I hope you take this as um, constructive criticism, a positive, helpful critique. You know, you can critique people like myself, uh, you know, here on the platform and, and find little chinks in our armor and, oh, you know, you're doing this wrong. But if... If that activity for you leads you to a point where you don't end up doing anything because you know you can find a little a little little problem here with something someone's doing or a little problem there or uh, you know something's not perfect that somebody's doing, if the alternative is to do nothing at all, you know what are you doing to yourself? What are you doing for yourself? You know why are you watching prepping videos? You either think that this stuff is plausible, it could actually happen, or you don't. And if you don't think this stuff is plausible, why are you wasting your time watching prepping videos? And if you do think this stuff is plausible, you, ought to, you honestly got to get up and actually do some stuff. It's not enough to just find issues with other things that other people are doing. You know, because when the rubber meets the road and you are or you're out and you, know, you didn't bother to set up something like this for yourself, and in the, you know, in the horrible event that something actually happens, the fact that something like this was really inconvenient, or it's not 100%, or, you know, the, there are potential issues with it, you know, that's not going to make your situation any better. You know, the fact that you found some, some issues with something that, you know, somebody else is, you know, actively trying to do things. Um, and that said, with all the different things that I'm doing, I'm sure there are issues in it, and I'm sure some of those issues are going to come back to bite me in the future. But that's not a reason to do nothing and to just kind of critique and uh, you know, poke holes in 
other people's plans. And don't get me wrong, I love getting the pushback. I, you know, I learn a lot from you guys and people give me some pushback. I'm like, yeah, you know, maybe I should put a little bit more thought into that or put a little more thought into this other thing that somebody brought up. I love it, but the, the thing is, it's not doing anything for you. Critiquing other people's situations, if they're smart, like me, <laughs> You know they're gonna they're gonna benefit from that. They're gonna benefit from your critiques. They're gonna think them through. Maybe you know the critiques garbage, and you know they'll be like, ah, well that doesn't make sense. Maybe the critiques uh, critiques helpful, and you know if it's someone like myself, they'll have an open mind to it, and they'll you know they'll they'll make some modifications. So you're helping that person potentially if you have a, you know actual legitimate critique of something. But you know, get up and help yourself a little bit. It's not enough to just critique other people. Other, other people's plans. You know, if you don't get up and start making changes in your own life, it doesn't matter how right you were with, you know, all these other issues that, you know, online preppers like myself, you know, things that we share with you guys. You know, I should be making dinner right now. I, you know, I, I just popped the bread out of the oven. That's going to be part of dinner. But, you know, you know I, I want to share things with you guys. So I want to share my thoughts with you guys. And I'm hoping that my critique of you guys will be taken the same way that I take a lot of your critiques. That I'll think about it. You'll think about it. And, you know, think if there's any validity to, to what I'm saying. And essentially the core message of what I'm saying is, you know, if you think you're not wasting your time watching prepping videos, videos, if you think this stuff is actually plausible, it's time to take some action. It's not enough to just critique other people. you got to get some stuff going in your own situation. And, you know, the, the fact that a solution being presented here isn't 100%, you know, maybe it's just a 90% solution or an 80% solution. The fact that it's not 100% isn't a legitimization of the idea that you should just stick with a 0% solution. Because 90 is bigger than 0. <laughs> so it's easy, 80. So that's it. I'm going to get in and make dinner. But, uh, you know, I, ho I hope, you know, if you're one of the people that uh, is the type of person that tends to leave these types of, uh, you know, critiques, criticisms, you know, depending on how you look at it, you know, really think them through because, you know, the age of consequences, I think, is uh, coming upon us at the moment. And, uh, you know, life's not fair. <laughs> you know? uh, and uh, you know, I, whatever your life situation might be, there's not going to be any forgiveness. There's not going to be any compassion necessarily uh, meted out to you just because you had a difficult life situation. If you're out on the surface, and you need a shelter, if you didn't make one, you won't have one. That's it. Thanks for watching. Hey YouTube preppers, if you enjoyed this video, here's another one that I think you might like. But before you click on it, I wanted to take a moment to thank all the people on the right hand side of your screen. They help to support all the work that I do here over at Patreon.com. If you'd like to join them and get your name added to the list, the link's below.